Thank you, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Um, I'm here to talk about Spruce, its mission, sign in with Ethereum, and how the concept came about its being, and especially where we go from here. Um, this is my third time in this country, and I'm really excited to be in Bogota and looking forward to exploring more of Bogota. Um, before we jump into the, all the fun stuff about Spruce and sign in with Ethereum, I'd like to give a quick introduction about myself. I am Anukriti Kumar. Uh, I'm a product manager with Spruce. Um, before joining Spruce, I was working as a data program manager um, with an airline in New York City. I'm a computer science engineer, so I understand technology a little bit and code a little bit as well. Um, I started my Web3 journey probably 11 months back. And two months back, I took the plunge and started working 100% in this space. And there hasn't been any looking back, and I'm enjoying every bit of it. So, and outside of work, I love dogs, and I'm really passionate about them. And my husband and I, we try to foster one dog probably every two months because we are not yet ready for the commitment. So, let's jump on to the fun part now. Oh, yes. So, Spruce, um, I'll talk more about Spruce, but it's a two-year-old company, and we are working a bunch of use cases of data and identity. And that's the team there. Um, we are 17 to 18 people company, and I love working with these folks. OK, so this is we are, well, all this we are going to cover today, probably next 20 to 25 minutes. So jumping into the decentralized identity where Spruce functions in. So just giving a quick background of what is decentralized identity. So decentralized identity is an open identity framework where you own the data and it's all open and self-controlled. Um, think of decentralized identity as statements about reality. And these statements about reality could be on-chain as well as off-chain. And they can range from anything such as where do I live? which university did I go to, how much Ethereum transaction I made in last one hour, what DAO do I work for. So all, they, all those statements are statements about reality in some way or the other. And as said that it could be on-chain as well as off-chain. An on-chain example could be that an Ethereum transaction happened, a signature was involved, and if something happens, the Ethereum blockchain can attest to the state of itself. And of course, it's fully verifiable. And the off-chain example could be, the second line is, it could refer to as a JSON signature and an Ethereum address associated with a Twitter account or a Google account. So, but there's a difference between the on-chain and the off-chain. As said, off-chain is fully verifiable and there will be cryptographic evidence for you to prove that this is true. Whereas for off-chain, if someone says my Twitter account is associated with my Ethereum account, it may or may not be true. So it all depends on who is making the claim, what evidence is being provided in that statement, and what, how are you interpreting that evidence of um, statement. So for example, if I give you a driving license and you get caught by a police officer uh, and you show that driving license, it has no value. So it has to be given to you by a transport authority. In the US, we use DMV. So DMV has to give you the driving license, and only then it would be a verifiable, verifiable credential. So how does this happen off-chain? So let's try and decode this diagram a little bit. So what I, I explained previously, that it's a trusted framework who is issuing the statement and who is verifying it, this is what happens here. So this, um, this model is known as verified credential model. It is a global data standard issued by W3C. And if you were to work in the decentralized identity world, you'd hear about this a lot. So, and we like to call it at Spruce, is issuer, holder, and verifier. So issuer, for example, could be a university and where the holder completed their masters from. 
and the verifier could be an employer who wants to know that whether the holder actually completed their masters from the issuer. So in this case, the issuer will issue the credentials to the holder, which will live in holder's wallet. And once the verifier wants to see, okay, I want to verify whether the holder completed the masters from a particular university, the holder will send the credential to the verifier. So we want to move to a space of user and wallet centricity, where the user decides what data to, share, to be shared and with whom. So a small example of this is you have these social media websites. And let's say you have a page there. You have 100 people who follow you and 50 posts, and you have several likes on them. So that's one part of the data. And then the analytics are associated that few people like every of your posts. Uh, one of the reels got maximum engagement. Where does this data live now? This lives on the intermediary or the social media's website. We want to move to a world where you own all this data, the information and the data analytics associated with it, and hold it in your data vault. So, so this, is, this is what is happening here. So today is you are the user, the application, and the database sits with them. But we want to move, Spruce mission is to let users control the data across the web. And we like to think that if platform, instead of user going to the platform and resting all the control of the data with the platform, we want the platform to come to the, come to the user and access the user's data vault. And that's what's happening over there. The database is with the user. So Spruce, um, we like to think of ourselves as user control maximalist. We want to provide maximum user control to all the holders of their data. And we believe in self-sovereign identity and that's where we want to move to. Okay, so CUE, CUE is sign in with Ethereum. That solves a big problem. And I'd like for us to understand the problem first. The problem not really a problem, but what is happening today, the big login. So when you want to sign into a popular service, you will ideally, a user ideally will use a identity provider, which is mostly centralized and has control of all the user's identifier. While they might come with a problem, but I think they also have solved for a great user experience. Case in point, a forgot password. I use forgot password on a regular basis, and I'm sure a lot of people here. But what if there are few users sitting here and out there who want to have the option where they want to have the responsibility or full control over their own data set? And that is what not happens with big logins as of today. So we want to move from not your keys, not your crypto to not your keys, not your identifier. Or this could be not your keys, not your data as well. So. I'd like to do a quick thought experiment related to the big login. Um, I have a Gmail account. Let's say tomorrow I lose all the access to my Gmail account. What all will I use the access to? It's not just my emails. It will be everything that I use my Gmail identifier with. For me personally, it could be Amazon, Etsy, uh, Uber, um, Airbnb. So I am giving a lot of power to this another identity. I'm at the behest of this another identity, which is controlling a lot of my data and who may or may not be incentive aligned with me all the time. But if it was key management, I would easily probably learn about key management or deploy a key management system and then I'll be able to control all my data. Okay, so these are a few factual points. Um, MetaMask has done a great job. Um, last, it was seen that we have two, 21 million users. That's monthly active users on MetaMask. But as of today, we just use the transaction, the Connect Wallet, to do the transaction, the financial transactions, and that's, that's about it. So how can we better do the Connect Wallet part? And that is where sign-in with Ethereum comes. And 
if you've logged into your passport site on DEF CON, you have the option of logging in with your email and with sign in with Ethereum. That is what Spruce uh, sign in with Ethereum compliant is. So a quick history of uh, how sign in with Ethereum came into being. Um, I think summer of 2021, Ethereum Foundation and ENS DAO released a RFP and called for proposals on and requesting for spec, which included reference implementation of JavaScript and backwards compatibility mode with OpenID, Connect, and OAuth, so that people or users on the Web2 world can also use sign in with Ethereum. And this was right after the Vitalik's talk at ETCC, where he talked about the importance of identity. And that is when people realized there could be a bunch of use cases with sign in with Ethereum. There was a call of a lot of RFP um, proposals and a bunch of proposals were submitted and Spruce was lucky enough to be picked up. So we developed sign in with Ethereum in the open, on, uh, in public. There were a ton of community calls. It took seven to eight months to develop the specifications and the whole core, of core libraries. And we worked with a lot of dApps, with a lot of wallets. And you can go and check it out. It's called EIP4361. Um, that's Ethereum Improvement Program 4361. And it's very close to be getting approved. OK. So how do you interact with the Web3 world today? Um, you go to MetaMask, connect, click on Connect Wallet, and you are there exploring the Web3 ecosystem. That's about it. Nothing happens there. You are proving that you own the public key, but not verifying your identity. So Connect Wallet, you are just proving to be the account holder without any proof. And that is where sign-in with Ethereum comes. So sign-in with Ethereum is a specification that includes both elements of identity and signing to enable users to take full control over their data using their Ethereum profile and ENS profile. And of course, this is all open source and that can be checked out. So Siri has been going on for a while. Um, I think people have been trying to work with authentication flows on blockchain accounts since 2016, 2017. And what we've done is we've standardized the message. When you sign in with Ethereum, it's a standardized message. I can show you how it looks like in a second. And sign in with Ethereum was developed with, heavily with JSON web tokens, which is of course live in production and used by billions of users. So these are the examples of what happens as of today. You see a random nonce um, when you sign in, or probably a random hash, which has no meaning to a Web2 user, or sign into my, my website, or there's a, there's a small message. But what we've done is we've given a standardized mes message and a rigid grammar, which, where there will be no malicious statements can be injected into this. And we've purposefully made it that way. So, so basically, we've standardized the message to give the user a great UX experience, user experience, but we've also added few security features. And one of the most important security features is domain binding. So by domain binding, I mean, when you're trying to collect to a wallet and it says, your wallet says that domain, for example, example.org is trying to connect to your wallet, the wallet will now actually be able to see, or the wallet has the opportunity to check whether example.org is an actual website, and the request is coming from example.org. Um, this happens over a TLS connection, so the wallet can say with pretty, conf uh, with pretty much confidence that this is not a phishing site and example.org is an actual site. So, and this is, this is the example of that. And the wallet will keep on popping up messages, give, will give you messages probably three or four times to warn you that this is a phishing site in case example.org is not what it claims to be. So that's how it will look like the sign in with Ethereum. And if you were signing on the DEF CON app using sign in with Ethereum, that is what it will look like as of today. So, 
as, as mentioned before, we've developed COE out in the open with all the community, uh, with a lot of wallets and devs, and these are our initial partners, and we will be working very closely with them in coming months and weeks. So what, where do we go from here? COE, um, COE is a basic library that will enable great user experience and will provide security features, but we are trying to work with on, on a bunch of products um, where the data can be brought in by the user. So you have Twitter account associated with your Ethereum account, and you can bring that wherever you want to. It not, doesn't necessarily have to be on one site. You want to go on Uniswap, you can, you can take your Twitter account or Facebook account with you. So that's your bring your own data workflow. And we are also working on core libraries and some products where CUE functionality will be enhanced and, um, and being able to work with wallets and apps very closely. So if I were to leave you with a few thoughts, um, sign in with, in with Ethereum provides with you with a great user experience. So if you're a wallet or DAP, you definitely want to use it because it will help the user, especially a Web2 user, get onboarded onto your wallet or your DAP pretty easily and it provides security for the user as well. So you can definitely avoid the phishing aspect. And we are trying to build CUE and its components more. So if you want to work with us, we build in the open, please reach out to us. Um, that's my Twitter handle, or feel free to reach out to anyone in the team. We are pretty responsive and um, we'd love to work with you guys. So yeah, thank you everyone. <laughs>